Hello, I'm Lord Jimsical, and you're watching You Have Issues, a programme all about comics. So, the Wonder Woman movie will be released soon, so it begs the question, are DC and Warner Brothers about to get their shit together? Before I discuss this, I feel I need to bring some of you up to speed, or rather, provide a bit of context. Outside of Batman, DC movies have had a bit of a rough time of it. Marvel have been, and still are, blazing ahead with their movies. They're sticking to their very successful formula to the point of milking it, and there is no sign of stopping it. Man of Steel, while I did enjoy it, was a rough start to the DC Extended Universe. I felt that a new Superman movie was way overdue, and while it did get a few things wrong, it was a promising start. Warner Brothers went into a panic and ordered 12 cc's of Batman stat, and thus begun the journey that led to the much maligned Batman vs Superman. I'm not going to go over any old ground in this regard, if you want to know my thoughts on Batman vs Superman, click here, I've already done a review of it. Then, way out of left field, Suicide Squad was announced as the next film in the DC Extended Universe. The debate raged on whether or not this was going to be the turning point for DC movies. I didn't think so. The trailers made it look dreadful. It turned out that it really was. And the comments section of any comics news post simply further showed the fandom's opinion of it. Well, before it rapidly descended into a big fest of shit posting and memes. Then, the trailer for the Wonder Woman movie was released, and I enjoyed the absolute hell out of it. All the trailers for Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad were clunky as balls, so the Wonder Woman trailer was a huge breath of fresh air, but then it got me thinking, is this the real turning point for the DC Extended Universe? My answer? Oh yes, I believe so. Disclaimer, I am purely basing this on the trailers that I've seen, which look great. They are noticeably different from any of the trailers for Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad, which of course is a good thing. As this is an origin story, it has a great feeling of a hero rising up to end a huge destructive conflict. In this case, it's World War I, or what was originally called the Great War. Considering the character in question, it is definitely an understatement to say that there's a lot riding on this movie. Female representation in superhero movies is a key issue here. Now, on that note, as I was typing up my notes for this episode, I went on a huge long tangent about female representation that just simply derailed this entire episode. So what I'm doing now is dedicating an entire episode all of itself about female representation in superhero movies and comics. This will be released after the film's out. I've seen a few complaints about how the marketing for the Wonder Woman movie has been handled, and a lot of it has been interpreted as sexism. There's definitely a few points to be made in this regard, but personally I think it has a lot more to do with having little faith in the IP rather than the fact that it's a female lead. Allow me to elaborate. In the past, DC haven't been known for taking many risks outside of Batman. Prior to Man of Steel, nearly every other attempt that DC have made into making one of their other IPs into a film has been nothing other than the subject of ridicule. In my opinion, this probably led to the suits at Warner Brothers putting two and two together, coming up with five, and effectively vetoing anything that didn't start with Bat and end with Man. And thus, the marketing for the Wonder Woman movie has been lacklustre. In the lead up to Batman vs Superman, you couldn't look anywhere without seeing the two characters plastered on lunchboxes, the size of buses, newspapers, you name it. But with Wonder Woman, I only see Gal Gadot's face on Facebook, Twitter, and not many other places. Poor show, chaps. Another criticism is that the trailers feature Steve Trevor a little bit too much, leading to concerns that a woman couldn't possibly carry her own movie and has to rely on a straight white male to put more bums on seats. I disagree with this because, again, I think this has more to do with little faith in the IP than it is a woman in the lead role. Well, Warner Brothers have already done this with Superman. Since Man of Steel wasn't particularly well received, they simply strapped on some Batman gloves, wanked all over what was meant to be a script for a Superman sequel, and had Batman take up two thirds of the entire film. Well, at least that's how I imagine it went. Marvel are doing this with Spider-Man of all people. Fucking Spider-Man. Having Tony Stark as a main feature in the trailer is mainly to show that it's set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but you could also argue that this is because the Andrew Garfield movies didn't do well either. Aunt May is inevitably going to be part of any Spider-Man film set in the early part of his career, but that doesn't mean that the studio has no faith in a young person in the lead role so they need to bump up the roster with older adults. But I digress. Steve Trevor is a huge part of Wonder Woman's origin story. He is her first contact with the world outside of Themyscira and thus it's not at all strange that he's going to have a huge part in the movie. Anyway, public opinion of the character has been positive. A lot of people who didn't like Batman vs Superman did turn around and say that they thought Wonder Woman was the best part of the movie. So I have a feeling that this is going to be one of two things. This will either be the turning point for the DC Extended Universe where they will sustain a marked level of improvement, or it will be the best of a bad bunch, or rather the cream of the crap. 
Truth be told, I won't know any of this until I see the movie. I'll be going up to London to watch it with the girlfriend around June the 9th, so I'll have the review up a few days later. In the meantime, what are your thoughts or expectations? Let me know in the comments, on Facebook or on Twitter. Thank you very much, I'll see you soon.